Far Cry 6 has been out for some time, which means we've had a lot of time to collect all the weapons and use them extensively. So now it's time for our definitive best weapons video for almost every weapon category. We will have timestamps up, so if you're looking for a specific weapon or category, you can use that to skip ahead. All right, let's start right off with the assault rifles. And one of the best in this category is the amazing SSGP 58. You can get this from FND caches in the open world, and even though the rewards from those are random, high tier weapons like this one are very likely to drop from the caches in the main city Esperanza. The SSGP rifle is a real jack of all trades. It can be modded for stealth or open combat and will do great in both scenarios. And it doesn't outshine every other rifle in stats, but it mostly sits somewhere in the middle, like with its fire rate, for example. But that 40 round clip is really nice though. But yeah, the only real downside to this weapon is that you need a lot of gunpowder from all the attachments you can put on this thing. But once you do, the SSGP can work in pretty much any scenario. There's a Libertad variant as well, so keep an eye out for Lola if you want an SSGP with those slightly better Mark II molds. And if semi-automatic rifles are more your thing, then another weapon you can get from the F&D caches in Esperanza is the SKS. This thing is pretty much a semi-automatic sniper if you put an ACOG scope on it, and adding a silencer on top means it's the perfect tool for sneaking in F&D bases. That being said, it can still be a lot of fun to use without the silencer though, and it performs pretty great too. One thing to keep in mind if you're using the SKS is the reload animation though. If you empty the clip, you will shove 10 bullets in all at once, but if you have a partially filled mag, then you will instead put the bullets back in one by one. So often emptying a clip before a reload results in a faster reload animation, just a quick tip to keep in mind when using this weapon. And if you're looking for a guaranteed great weapon though, there is another assault rifle you can get in Esperanza and this one will be an especially great get for stealth players. The Urushi is a unique variant of the ARC rifle that you can find in a chest over here in Esperanza. Unlike the F&D caches, this unique weapon will always be in this exact location. And the Urushi is not that well guarded either, so it's totally something you can get right after finishing the tutorial island. And it being a unique weapon means that you can't mod it so you can't take the silencer off and you also can't add a scope. Surprisingly however I didn't really miss the scope as this incredibly accurate and fast firing assault rifle allowed me to easily kill enemies at most ranges. I find the iron sights extremely easy to use which in turn allows you to easily sneak through a camp and kill enemies with a silent headshot even if they're a bit further away. And since you get this unique version with all the attachments included all you need to do is get to that chest in Esperanza and you have a stealth rifle that can carry you through the entire game. Before we continue with more amazing weapons, if you like the video so far, it would be awesome if you could leave a like as it would really help us out. And if you don't want to miss our next Far Cry video, remember to subscribe as well. Now let's move on from sneaking to something a little less subtle. Because if sneaking around is less your thing and blasting someone with a shotgun at close range sounds like more fun, well then you're in luck as there is a great selection of shotguns in the game as well. The standout here is definitely the RMS-18. This shotgun can be found in F&D caches in Esperanza as well and it is special mostly due to the fact that it can do two things that other shotguns can't. For starters, it can burst fire. If you hold the trigger down, it will fire a burst of three shells, but you can of course use single shots as well with a decent rate of fire too. And another thing that's great about the RMS is the reload, or more specifically the magazine. Where other shotguns have you load individual shells into the weapon, the RMS actually has a magazine that you just slap in which makes the reload animation a lot quicker. And if all of that wasn't enough, the weapon is just a close-ranged beast that will wreck about anything that comes close enough. Another shotgun that I really recommend is the Spaz-12. You get this one from the Passing the Torch treasure hunt over here on the map, and in many regards, it's the exact opposite of the RMS-18. The Spaz is a classic shotgun. Pump action, seven shells that need to be reloaded individually, and definitely not the greatest weapon for stealth, although you can still put a silencer on it if you want. For a pump action shotgun though, it has a really high rate of fire, which is great when encountering groups of enemies. Also, don't be afraid to use it over some longer ranges as I was often surprised at the range that the Spaz-12 could get kills at. Another category of weapons that performs great at shorter ranges are of course SMGs and the first one on the list is an absolute monster of a weapon called the PPSH-41. You can find it in F&D caches in some of the higher ranked regions of the world and while it is not the most customizable of SMGs, the PPSH has a massive magazine of 71 bullets, almost rivaling some of the LMGs and a great rate of fire to boot. Since you can't apply a muzzle attachment to the PPSH, silencers are out of the window and loud and proud is the only way to go. 
To make it even easier for yourself, I recommend putting a good laser pointer on it to improve hipfire accuracy and then you can just spray away against groups of enemies. And sure, it's a shame that you cannot use it for stealth, but this weapon is so much fun to use that I had a hard time going back to other SMGs after using it. But luckily, there is another great SMG that is in many regards the exact opposite of the PPSH. The MP7, once again found in FND caches in Esperanza, is a highly moddable weapon with great stats all around, but especially the accuracy is very impressive for an SMG. With a silencer and scope, it's great for sneaking around cams and headshotting enemies. You can also exchange the silencer for a compensator if you plan to go loud, which pretty much eliminates recoil so it's even easier to hit your shots. Kind of like the SSGP, this SMG can pretty much do anything provided you have the gunpowder for the attachments and it also has three mod slots to upgrade it even further. Now let's move on to the kings when it comes to long range sniper rifles. It's actually very easy to pick the best one here, but it does have a bit of a problem when it comes to actually getting the weapon. So to get the easy part out of the way, the best sniper in the game is the GM6 Link. If that name doesn't ring a bell, don't worry, that's because the base model Lynx does not exist in the game at the moment of recording. Two variants of it exist though, the Insurgency Reward EVA and the Alpha Wolf, which is part of the Wolf Bundle in the store. The latter was also available at Lola's Black Market a while back, so you were able to get it for free. But yeah, you can see the problem, right? As long as there is no regular Lynx, you'll have to wait for the Alpha Wolf to appear at Lola or for another variant to appear as an Insurgency Reward in order to get it. The reason we are still putting it on the list then is well actually quite simple it's the best sniper in the game as a semi-automatic it already has the edge in firing rate over every sniper in the game except the svd insane damage and accuracy and in the case of the alpha wolf a whole selection of scopes silencers and other attachments you can put on it but even though you can't mod it the eva variant of the weapon is great too as thanks to the improved suppressor cooling rate mod on it the suppressor can literally not overheat no matter how fast you try firing the weapon so if you don't have it yet but have an opportunity to get it in the future do it and if you do have it and aren't using it then definitely try it out and see if you like it as much as i did but we're not going to leave you hanging by listing a sniper that's really hard to get and then calling it a day because there are two other great snipers that are a lot easier to come by if you missed out on the links those being the eastern front and the mbp 50. The Eastern Front is a great bolt action sniper that has been available at Lola since day one, so provided they don't remove it, get yourself the necessary moneda and buy it. Or alternatively, go look in more FD caches in Esperanza to find the MBP 50. This is another great bolt action sniper that is part of the base game, so even if the Lynx and Eastern Front are gone at some point, you can still get this great rifle and headshot people from far, far away. Alright, now it's time for the big boys, the LMGs, and arguably the biggest and meanest of them all is the MG42. This one you get from a treasure hunt over here on the map, just flip three switches in the building and that should complete the quest which gets you a mount and this amazing LMG. Like with the PPSH, this one only has one mode of firing and that mode is loud, as no muzzle attachments means no silencer. But what you do get in return is a massive magazine size and one of the highest fire rates in the game. Only the vector shoots faster, but the difference isn't all that much. And especially that large magazine is gonna come in handy, as the MG42 is for sure not the most accurate weapon around thanks to the heavy recoil, which cannot be countered by a compensator because once again, no muzzle slot. One way to work around this is of course the hip fire with a laser pointer, but there is actually another trick you can use. I found that the recoil for the MG42 is mostly vertical, so if you aim at an enemy's chest and then let the recoil of the first few shots carry you up, you will often manage to land a headshot. But if you don't like that and if you want an LMG that's a bit easier to handle, then the MG21 is a great pick too. You can find this one in F&D caches in some of the higher ranked regions in the world, and while it doesn't have a fire rate like the MG42, this weapon does have a muzzle slot which means you can put a compensator on it to make it much more accurate. It still has a large 80 round clip and a decent rate of fire and with the proper mods it almost feels like an assault rifle in terms of accuracy and recoil but you can of course fire for way longer without running out of bullets. And then finally we have some great sidearms to choose from as well, the best of them being the Desert Eagle or the Deagle for friends and the P226. The Desert Eagle is a reward for the last one to leave Treasure Hunt over here on the map and then the P226 is an unlock from one of the final story missions in the game. The reason we're listing these two together is because, well, they both serve a very similar purpose. Both can be modded for a more stealthy approach with silencers and can be used at longer ranges with some decent sights. Both of them have three mod slots and both of them have roughly similar stats, although the Deagle has a bit more damage and the P226 has a bit more fire rate and magazine size. So it's really up to 
personal preference which one you want to use as both are very good and both are perfect weapons to use for the sidearm reload tactic we've mentioned in previous videos as well. Just a quick recap, to circumvent the long reload animation on say an LMG, you can instead put the reloading this weapon reloads all weapons mods on a sidearm alongside any other mods that improve reload speed and then reload that weapon instead of your primary to refill all ammo. And we also have some auto pistols available in the sidearm slot and there's an easy standout here, the 6B13 Auto. With a great rate of fire, accuracy and handling and a 40 round clip, it's practically an SMG in the sidearm slot. It can be made even better with a laser pointer for better hip fire and a compensator to negate the recoil and then it will be easy to clear an entire location with just your sidearm. As long as the target's not too far away, the 6B13 performs great in combat and to make it even better, this one also has 3 mod slots so you can make it even stronger. Stronger. There is one final category we wanted to touch on before we wrap things up and that is the category of the resolver weapons. We did a separate video ranking all of them and since they're all so different I highly recommend giving that a watch to see which one might be worth picking up for your playstyle but there are two standouts that I quickly wanted to touch on here. The first being the pyrotechno which after upgrading it became the reason why I don't use launchers anymore. With the homing missiles equipped it is the best anti-vehicle weapon in the game and it works great against regular enemy stuff. Too. And the other one we can't leave unmentioned is of course the Lavarita rifle which combined with the accompanying Supremo can make you shoot through walls. We made a dedicated video on that too so give that one a watch if you don't have it already. And that concludes our roundup of the best weapons in Far Cry 6. Remember to leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next one and if you want you can watch our previous video where we run down the best gear in Far Cry 6. For now thanks everyone so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!